This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Muay Thai. One of the craziest and most brutal martial arts on earth. Combat sports in general shows you that how vulnerable you are, but at the same time how potentially good you can be. There was like some demon that I had to fight in my in my life, you know. It went for Thai boxing then, but I'd probably be dead. Over the last 50 or so years, it has gone from an isolated sport in Thailand to a global sensation. Bicep. Throwing elbows, smashing and kicking yeah. legs, and it's amazing to watch. But behind the glitz and the glamour is also a darker side. So on a normal child's brain, there aren't any of these areas of damage. None of this so me and my friend Vinny jumped on a plane to Bangkok to immerse ourselves in the world of Thai boxing. But before that, as completely inexperienced fighters, we wanted to get in a ring and just see where we were at. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, man, time. Anan Anwar was a child star in Thailand in the 90s. He was like the Justin Bieber of Thailand. So I got to train boxing at a at a gym with professional fighters for three months and won. That was, that was, that was fun. We decided to go to that same gym, Maroc MMA, for a crash course in Muay Thai. Kieran, that's me. One of the gym's fighters. I like your Sunday. Yeah, he looks jacked. I noticed when I spoke to fighters, there was always something clearly very different about them. He's 62, he does this every day. Which guy? He's 62. That's insane. They would have this confidence and carried themselves in such a way that you could see they were a fighter. And they would also show you a lot of respect. I love boxing. Boxing's a lot of fun. I think Muay Thai is twice as fun. They're so healthy at the minute. Yeah. It's so healthy. I mean, for Thai boxing, for me, it gave me an ability to be able to look after myself. Just, it gave me a sense of security. Where you're just in a mix of everyone who who's all there for like the same kind of passion and, and reason. It really brings you out your shell and you know you get to speak to different people and build that confidence. After an intense hour of training, I developed a new respect for what Muay Thai is. <laughs> Yeah, that was one of the hardest things I think I've ever done. Muay Thai is Thailand's national sport. It came around in the 13th century as a way of teaching soldiers what to do when they lose their weapon in war. It's such a tradition here. It has this very deep roots culturally. That's just one of the things they want to hold on to and retain. It's steeped in Buddhist tradition, uh, Muay Thai. You know, you go to Thailand, you see the culture that's involved with Thai boxing, and it's really like a beautiful thing. You'll notice when fighters enter the ring, they will always do a dance. This dance is to show gratitude towards their teachers, parents, and ancestors. They take this very seriously. They'll go to the extent of taking bone fragments of their relatives, wrapping it up and putting it into a headdress or an amulet that goes around their arm. On top of this, they have a tradition of tattoos that are done through stick and poke. So naturally, after having one Muay Thai fight, you know, I had to get my tattoo. How are you feeling? <laughs> Yeah. So what differs Muay Thai from other martial arts is the fact that you can use punches, you can use elbows, you can use your knees, you can kick, and you can also clinch. However, there's no wrestling or groundwork. Just getting our tickets. <laughs> our kid's there, he's getting ready now. We saw him fighting in the gym, he was the guy that walked past us and just had the most stern look in his eye. What? Unfortunately, the guy we were rooting for, his name was Dion, if I did lose. I mean, we disagree with the decision, but who am I to say? For most of history, Muay Thai was very isolated to Thailand. But what I noticed when I was there was the amount of Westerners. Tons of people would come and travel to Thailand to live in camps and train every single day. There's more and more foreigners now are going over, Falangas, they say in Thai, are yeah. going over to train there to immerse ourselves in the sport. This is where I live. I came to Thailand for like, it was more of a spiritual thing. I didn't come here for my time. I've always wanted to fight. And I'll be honest with you, I was just scared, bro. It took a lot to, to put my foot in the gym, but as soon as I did, I was like, yo. And these guys here, they treated me like family. You know, they brought me in, they saw that I was hurting and they didn't judge. I had like <clears throat> some emotional moments and I thought I was ready to pack my bags and leave. And I was just assuming they would just kick me out. I'm like, hey, you know what? And they didn't, not at all. They sat me down, you know, they're like, it's okay. You know, related to me and some shit that I didn't even think they would, you know, and mm. it's beautiful. 
Before we carry on with the video, I want to give a massive shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring. Squarespace is hands down the best tool for building and developing your own website. These days, having a great website is more important than ever, but a lot of people think it's very hard to do. Squarespace takes care of all the really hard technical side and gives you a very easy to use platform full of tons of templates that you can customize to fit your brand. Along with templates, there are tons of built-in features. You've got appointment scheduling, e-commerce, email marketing. It's very simple to use and actually very fun. I'm making a website myself for a very top secret project. I will announce it very soon. And Squarespace has made it very easy. So be sure to head over to squarespace.com forward slash Jimmy the Giant. And to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain, use the code Jimmy the Giant. Anyway, back to the video. The, the Muay Thai started in 1977 in England. So there was two Thai masters come over. One was called Master Toddy and one was called Master Woody. What started teaching people Muay Thai. Master Sken came over. Or Grandmaster Sken is his name. Kiao Padung, who I trained with for years. But you got me into it. Then that's when Muay I started to take off in England. Ronnie Green was the pioneer, really. He was the first person. And Ronnie Green started to fight the Dutch and this, that, and the other. I think either Ronnie Green or Mick Mullaney was the first to fight in Thailand. Ronnie Green was and still is a, a you know a legendary part of the sport. But you see, Muay Thai was always very isolated to Thailand. People didn't really know about it outside of there. That was until one legendary fight. Three minute rounds with a one minute break, Just my understanding, yes. Round number one, Rick Rufus in the long pants, Kit Song Grit in the short pants. So Rick Rufus is considered one of the greatest kickboxers of all time. And up until this fight, he was undefeated. In 1988, Chang Peck became one of the first ever Thai fighters to go abroad and bring Muay Thai to the wider world. And he did so in a fight against Rick Rufus. Uh, yeah, Chang Peck was a big kicker, uh, old style uh, Muay Thai, so he's just sit big kick sit down really heavy in the stance. Uh, that was a famous fight where he, where he yeah, broke his leg. He broke Rick Rufus' his leg, I believe. Kisandra's looking very, very strong now. And just obviously extremely aggressively coming in. The, the, early, the early 70s uh, to the mid 80s. In Muay Thai wasn't big globally. Yeah, and a few few of them did fight. Uh, Americans did fight. The, uh, the, the Thais, Peter Sugarfoot Cunningham, um, who was in No Retreat, No Surrender, a movie. Uh, Danny the Jet, you They didn't block low kicks. They tried to jump over them. They tried to, because the stance was, the foot was turned in. So they got the legs chopped off to pieces. Chang Peck wins and Rick Rufus from here actually went on to take up Muay Thai, working with Chang Peck's trainer to get himself better. Kick the motherfucker's ass. Just one year later, in 1989, Jean-Claude Van Damme would appear in a film called Kickboxer, in which he goes to Thailand to learn the ancient sport of Muay Thai. This film, along with films like Ong Bak, Chop D, as well as video games like Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, did massive work for bringing Muay Thai to a much wider and more Western audience. More and more Thai boxers came into kickboxing and actually started to dominate. These fighters became champions in kickboxing and completely revolutionized the sport. But there would be one thing that was arguably even more more important that would come along and completely put Muay Thai on the map, and that was UFC. I'm Orlando Wheat, Muay Thai, Thai boxing world champion. We're gonna have some fun in the ultimate championship. We, Orlando Wheat fought, I think it was the second UFC, or maybe the third, I had it on a VHS. But yeah, Orlando Wheat fought um, uh, Remke Pardew, I think, and he did all right. He fought a few times, kneed people and elbowed people and did well. Yeah, and there was no weight categories then. It was just bananas. It was, uh, <laughs> it was crazy. But, um... The UFC started in the 90s and would completely shake up the world of competitive fighting, pitting different disciplines against each other to find out which was the best. The MMA has to have Muay Thai in it. If it doesn't, it's not, it's not MMA. Really. If, you know, you, you've got to have a level of decent Muay Thai. You can't stand the same. It wouldn't work because you get double legged or taken down pretty quick. Uh, it's essential, you've got to be able to do it. Why you, you know, it's part of the game. With legendary fighters like Orlando Wheat, Jose Aldo, Valentina Shevchenko, and Anderson Silva further elevating the sport. He's out. Anderson Silva! You might be there wondering, why are there not more Thai fighters that are in the UFC? It's a pretty good question. Yes, you never see like Thai, like Thai fighters in UFC though, do you? That's because they all do Thai. Yeah. They all like in it's like an, an honorable thing in their country as well, lad. If you fight Muay Thai, you know what yeah. I mean? MMA isn't the same in like them sorts of countries, yeah. Like they don't they don't look at it the same. He is a living legend! He is Santa! The 
so much on it there and like fighting Thai and fight, especially fighting in their stadiums in Thailand. There's a widespread Muay Thai pipeline in Thailand, like small gyms, lots of places to compete, leagues, competition, etc. And so Thai fighters really just aspire to be Muay Thai champions from a very young age. And when I say very young age, I mean a very young age. Children as young as seven are regularly paid to fight. Their matches draw huge crowds. Gambling on them is big business. A very controversial side of Muay Thai is the popularity of child fighters. Children literally as young as three and four will start Muay Thai. Many of these children by just age 15 will already have had over 100 full contact fights. Yeah, I mean, Thailand is a third world country, people forget that. Um, get a few fights at local fairs etc and they go and you know go to a gym in Bangkok and they start sending money back to the parents it's a way of earning money and it's not always like the best life like it's um it's tough for sure because they're like the breadwinner from a young age so hence why they retire at something like age 25 you know so you obviously love Muay Thai why on top of the age being very low, the preparation and training for these fights are incredibly intense. The average training regime is five to six days a week of two sessions every day, both of which being two to three hours long. Practice will start in the morning, usually consisting of a five to 10 kilometer run with endless conditioning and kicking pads to strengthen the shins. The dedication and discipline of Thai fighters are unparalleled, but many critics will say that this is child exploitation. And I can't lie, it did feel a little bit weird watching two children in a ring fight whilst grown men were betting on them next to us. My boy got f***ed up. We did it. We saw a fight that was f***ed up. <laughs> Seeing kids beat the out of each other. However, the deeper I researched into this, the more rounded of an opinion I formed. These children in Thailand come from extremely poor conditions. For these kids, Muay Thai is an opportunity to earn a living and potentially escape poverty. They give all of their money to their parents or save for the future. And like when I look at this through a Western lens, it's really hard not to see it as wrong and immoral. Especially the fact that there are studies showing how the brains of young Muay Thai fighters are often damaged with lower average IQ and a higher rate of dementia as they get older. But you see, this perspective I have comes from a culture where where we have a lot of choice and opportunity. For those Thai kids growing up in poverty, Muay Thai offers them an opportunity to escape poverty. It comes from a moralistic high ground, doesn't it? You know, they're like, oh, look at them. Mm. And, you know, oh, look at them, they're doing that. And and that's why I'm always, you should always be very respectful to them. And they've got a lot of them, a lot of them have got nothing. So when like a Westerner goes over to fight a Thai or a Thai comes over to fight a Western or whatever, you know, they, they realise there's like that real dog comes out because one is fighting because they enjoy it and they respect the sport, which is fine. And then the other guy is potentially like, if I don't win this fight, I, I can't feed my family. I think the difference between pro boxing in the Western world versus here in Thailand is that in the Western world, a pro boxer lives to fight. And here in the world of Muay Thai, they fight to live. It's a very conflicting subject because if you propose child fighters be banned, many of these kids would never rise out of poverty and become the heroes that they end up being. And some of these children Muay Thai fighters have become legends. One who I like, I like Borkow especially because he showed that he can transition over to K1, so like a different kind of rule set. He's kind of gone over to K1 under the K1 rule set, but using almost Muay Thai techniques to beat these guys. Everyone really enjoys watching Sanchai, who's just the GOAT really. Mm. He's one of the greatest of all time, and he, uh, but the way he fights, he's not like Crash Bang Wallace. He's so smart and so slick and, and so just special mm. that it's uh, you can't help but watch it open mouth, you know. Raja Damnem and Lumpini Stadium are the most prestigious of venues for Muay Thai. And so me and the boys, of course, went to Lumpini. It was incredible being there, the atmosphere, the cheering, as well knowing the history that many young prodigies were discovered there. And just witnessing the whole network of Muay Thai in this country was insane. <laughs> One FC is like the largest platform for Muay Thai. They pay their fighters very well, they look after them. And fights happen literally every day in Thailand. Wherever you go, especially when you get south like Krabby and Phuket. Yes, international and Thai fighters. Uh, I, 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 Tonight, 
9 p.m. Tonight, tonight. <laughs> and it would play yeah, like it would play like yeah. the Rocky theme tune. Best spiders from around the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's just the yeah, local yeah. boys. Like, <laughs> and it really changed my perspective of me wanting to learn to fight. I feel in as time was going on, and I was grown as a man, and I wanted to express my masculinity more. I felt more shunned for it. Art form is expression of emotions, right? But not all emotions are happy all the time. We're constantly being told that we're wrong for like having these emotions and it's like, you know, fuck this dog, yeah? Whether we're wrong or not, they're still there in it. Mm -hmm. Unless you want me to be on some destructive shit and but we know where that leads and we know we don't want to do that. Yeah, but yeah. it doesn't change the fact that we've still got that in us. You've almost got like the two expressions of it. You've either got the outright express it in a like up way which is what you're saying like being aggressive maybe on a night out you get drunk you fight someone or you do the opposite and you repress it and then you just become like soft vindictive and like it will just stay inside of you that feeling whereas as the route that you've taken is like a, a healthy form of expression of that feeling yeah. So I'm really excited to continue in this sport and learn more about it. If you want to see me make videos of my journey in Muay Thai, comment here. Follow me on Instagram, JimmyTheGiantUK. I'll keep you updated. And let's see where it ends up. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and watch this video right here.